Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And what I want to talk about and demo is GKE Autopilot. So this is actually really, really cool. Uh, I've been talking about this for like the past six to 12 months or so on like, you know, when are we going to get to a point with Kubernetes services in the cloud where we don't have to worry about the worker nodes anymore. We don't have to worry about, you know, the management and the health and scaling and all that stuff. And really, when do we get to the point where we just manage the API and the applications that we're deploying to Kubernetes? And that's exactly what GKE Autopilot does for us. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to look at a little bit of theory first. That way, you know what exactly you're getting from Autopilot. And then we're going to look at a demo on how to set up a Kubernetes cluster in Google Cloud with Autopilot. Before jumping into the demo, I want to show you a few quick reasons and key features why you would want to use GKE Autopilot. So there's a few things here. What does it actually do for you? Well, it's battle tested and hardened best practices learned from Google SREs. Next, it optimizes configurations ready for production at any scale. It helps reduce the learning curve so you don't have to go in, learn about worker nodes anymore, learn about you know labeling deployments to go to certain nodes, having the ability to auto scale those nodes and grow them when an application outgrows the existing nodes. You don't have to do any of that. There are certain maintenance windows that you can set up, which is really cool. So you could either do it, you know, kind of whenever, or you could do it certain days out of the week, certain times. There's life cycle management, of course. You no longer have to worry about managing the health of your nodes. So because those nodes are now managed by Google, you don't have to do anything with them. They're just always on. Next. And probably one of the coolest is you no longer have to calculate the amount of compute resources that workloads require. So let's say, you know, you want to scale out an application that's running in Kubernetes and you know, uh, you know what, I might have to have a few more worker nodes or an extra worker node or something like that. You don't have to do that anymore. Now there are a ton of really cool pod changes with autopilot. So Google is so sure that this is going to work out the way they're expecting is they're using three nines or 99.9% .9 uptime for pods. And those pods are going to be available through multiple zones. Next, which is really cool, you only get build per pod. So any unused capacity, like let's say you have three worker nodes running and you're paying for a worker node that you're not actually using or the application isn't actually using. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore because you're getting billed per pod. You're getting billed per application deployed. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the demo on how to set up GKE Autopilot. I'm in Google Cloud right now. And if you don't have an account, you can sign up for it's kind of like a 30 day trial almost. As you can see, you know, I have three days left in my trial and they give you three hundred dollars to spend, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do from Google Cloud is I'm going to go to the navigation menu. I'm going to scroll down to Kubernetes engine. From here, I'm going to go to clusters. And then from the clusters pane, I'm going to click on create. So this is new. As you can see, you have two different ways that you can deploy. One, you can deploy standard, which is, you know, you still manage the worker nodes. And then the second is autopilot where you don't and you pay per pod. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click configure here. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give my cluster a name. I'm going to say Nginx Autopilot. I'm going to choose my region here. I'll say US East 1. Scrolling down. And then we can choose, you know, what we want from a networking perspective, a public cluster or a private cluster. Now, a public cluster gives you public IP addresses and then a private cluster does not. So as you can see here, the control plane is inaccessible by default. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave a public and then scrolling down to the networking portion here. I actually haven't set up any specific networks or anything. So I'm just going to leave this all default. But if you do want to change this, you absolutely can. Like, for example, if you want your pod address range to be on another CIDR, you can absolutely change that. All right. Next, I'm going to go to advanced options here. And this is really, really cool. I love the fact that you can enable a maintenance window. So for example, if I click on enable maintenance window, I can now choose, you know, a custom editor or a weekly. So for example, let's say like I go to custom, I can choose exactly when I want my maintenance windows to be. 
but I do like the weekly editor. So you can see here like when the start time is and then the length. So let's say like I don't want to do any maintenance on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I just want to keep the maintenance windows for Saturday and Sunday. Then I could choose when I want to start them. So 12 a.m. And then I could choose the length for the maintenance window. Okay, so then I could scroll down here and I can set up any metadata for a description and labels to organize the cluster. I can add labels. And then finally, I can click create. So this is going to go ahead and this is going to submit what I want to do. And it's going to start to create the Kubernetes cluster here. And this is going to take a few minutes because it's literally deploying a Kubernetes cluster. So feel free to pause the video, wait till it's done, and then come on back. And as we can see, the Kubernetes cluster has been created. Notice that there's no number of nodes here. And that's because you're not managing them. So if I click on the Kubernetes cluster here, we could see all of the different information about the Kubernetes cluster. I can scroll down here. We can see the automation, like the maintenance window. We can see the networking, the security. So this is really cool. You know, shielded GKE nodes right off the bat. They're ensuring that you are secure here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on connect. And as you can see, you can use this command here from the G cloud to connect to your Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to copy this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my cloud shell here. It's going to open up right on the bottom and it's going to provision this cloud shell for us. And then from the cloud shell, I'm just going to paste in this command here. I'm going to run it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to authorize cloud shell. And as we can see, I am now connected to my Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to run kubectl get pods. As we can see, we have none. But if we run kubectl get nodes, we can see here that there are in fact nodes running. The good thing, of course, is, is that we don't have to manage them. So with that, that's how you can get started using autopilot and Google Cloud Platform. Thank you so much for watching.